What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Script Reader Pro. I'm guessing at some point you've been told to never use flashbacks in a script. Yeah, forget about that. Some of the best moments in cinema history are flashbacks. So instead of avoiding them altogether, let's talk about how you can write flashbacks in your script the right way. A flashback is a moment in which the narrative switches from the present to some time in the near or distant past. There are two main types of flashbacks, occasional and structural. In a structural format, the narrative heavily features past events. Think of movies like 500 Days of Summer or Saving Private Ryan. But by far, the most common type of flashback is occasional as in the narrative will occasionally deviate from an otherwise linear structure to illustrate some significant moment from a character's past. In this video, we'll be focusing on crafting occasional flashbacks in a linear narrative. Let's first address what gives flashbacks such a bad name. Well, for starters, there's tons of scripts out there containing flashbacks for no apparent reason. Picture this. You're halfway through the compelling mystery that is Knives Out when Marta suddenly has a flashback of how she was offered the job to be Harlan's caretaker. That flashback would completely distract from the narrative, not enhance it. So if your screenplay is feeling a little stale, inserting a random flashback is not going to be the best solution. Another common mistake made by aspiring writers is using too many flashbacks that can really slow down the momentum of your screenplay. Just as a guideline, if your script contains more than two or three flashbacks, it may be an indication that you're over relying on them. So when is it appropriate to write a flashback? Effective flashbacks take place at crucial turning points in the story when the character is at their most vulnerable state. Using flashbacks when a character is experiencing heightened emotion can really help us to visualize what happened in the character's past to trigger that emotion in the present. For example, a flashback may reveal a character's past trauma and help the audience understand their central flaw. Take 40-year-old Virgin, for example. Andy remembers his failed attempts at losing his virginity and a woman who tells him he's terrible in bed and should give up forever. Another example is a startling revelation in which a character has a highly emotional reaction to a startling plot development. Picture Malcolm in The Sixth Sense when he remembers getting shot and discovers he's been dead the entire movie. One last example for you of an emotion commonly found behind flashbacks is nostalgia. The character wistfully thinks back to a time in their past. With this one, it's still important for the flashback to come at a time when the character is grappling with a problem. And it should also help the audience better understand why it's affecting them. This occurs in one of my favorite all-time movies, Airplane. Ted bores an elderly lady on the plane, describing the night he first met Elaine. So now the next time you use a flashback, you can consider if it falls into one of those categories, either past trauma, a startling revelation, or nostalgia. And don't worry if it doesn't fit perfectly into those categories, they are just guidelines to help you write your flashback. The next step in writing your flashback will be communicating how you envision it to play out. Maybe it's a brief flash or a series of flashes. This style is called a memory hit flashback. The flashback can also be illustrated by a montage. The cool thing about a flashback montage is it's exactly like any other montage, it just occurs in the past. You can also write a full scene flashback, ranging from half a page to two pages or more. And that full scene flashback can go into another full scene that also takes place in the past. It's up to you. Full scene flashbacks typically contain dialogue. Think about Pulp Fiction when Butch dreams about Captain Coons' golden watch story. That scene was four minutes of all dialogue. And remember, these aren't steadfast rules. These styles can be combined and played around with. Every single scene, Flashback or otherwise must raise the stakes in some way, either by advancing the story, revealing character, or revealing the theme. If it does all three, even better. 
it's important to focus on the intent behind a flashback. Does it advance the story? A well-placed flashback can change the entire scope of a narrative. Like in Fight Club, the narrator realizes through a series of quick flashes of moments from earlier in the film that he is actually Tyler Durden. Or maybe the intent is to reveal character. Sometimes the audience has unanswered questions about the character's motivation. A well-placed flashback can clear that right up. In Silver Linings Playbook, Pat flashes back to coming home and finding Nikki in the shower with another man. Now the audience completely understands how Pat went off the rails. Last but not least, your flashback can reveal a theme. What is the insight you want the protagonist and the audience to learn, to grow from? In Spider-Man 2, Peter thinks back to Uncle Ben's thematically charged words. With great power comes great responsibility. Now let's dive into how you're going to format your flashback. For a memory hit flashback, we'll use an example from 40-Year-Old Virgin. Start with a mini slug line. This could say memory hit, flash two, or quick flashes, etc. Then enter the series of flashes listed by dashes. Once you've ended the action, indicate that with end quick flash, back to scene, or back to present. Formatting for a flashback montage is going to be really easy to remember because it's exactly like the formatting for a regular montage. The only exception is you're going to add the word flashback somewhere in or before the slug line. There are a few different ways we'll cover that writers like to format full scene flashbacks. The first is to add flashback to the end of the slug line. Then add end flashback to return to the present. You could also add flashback to the beginning of your slug line. Or before the slug line, you could write begin flashback, like in this example from Going the Distance. If your full scene flashback continues into another full scene, like we talked about, you can write flashback or flashback sequence at the beginning of the scene. Or you could write the time period that this sequence takes place, like this. For each subsequent subline, you don't need to indicate that we're still in the past. Simply confirm that the flashback sequence has ended by adding end flashback sequence or add a modifier to the present day scene, like interior office day back to present. One additional note that's worth mentioning are those scenes at the beginning of a film or very near the beginning of a film, which appear to be flashbacks. I'm talking about like in the movie Ted, when John receives Ted as a Christmas present as a young boy, he makes a wish which inadvertently brings Ted to life then the movie continues on in present day. So that may look like a flashback, but it's really an inciting incident. However you choose to think of it is fine, it just can't be labeled as a flashback. It's simply the inciting incident that kicks off the story. At the end of the day, the best way to get really good at writing flashbacks is by studying the screenplays that use them. Take note of flashbacks when they occur in movies. This is going to help you immensely in your writing to learn when, why, and how to use flashbacks. But of course, practice is everything. So go get to writing. I hope you found these flashback examples helpful. If you still have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. How do you approach writing your flashbacks? Let us know in the comments. If you'd like affordable feedback from a professional screenwriter, check out the link in the description below. Or if you want to watch more videos on our channel, you can check those out right here. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.